Welcome back everyone to Lore of the Shadow and I am here at Talan Haldir once again and once again I'm asking for an audience with Lord Celeborn. This is getting into a bad habit, isn't it? Hello again, Haldir. It is good to see you again. At least that's a better greeting than he gave me the first time I met him. Is it true that you have defeated Mazog in his own lair? Ah, you are truly an astonishment to me, my friend. I didn't really expect the rumor to be true. Let me know when you're ready to see Lord Celeborn, and I will bring you to him as he requested. All right, let's go and speak to Lord Celeborn. The defeat of Marzog has sent ripples of hope throughout the dwarves of the Iron Garrison. Though it be short-lived, my husband Celeborn must be satisfied with that victory and turn his eyes towards other dangers on the horizon. Are we ready? We do not allow outsiders into the Golden Wood. Lord Celeborn is waiting, Pine Lore. Come with me, for he greatly desires to speak with you. So he's allowing this outsider into the Golden Wood. Here we go. Oops. Here we go once again. Ah, uh, thank you, Haldir. You have surprised me, Pine Lore. Not only did you defeat Wallon the Karak and diminish his corrupting influence over Bazum Khar, but you also managed to broker a peace of sorts between the elves and dwarves forced to stand together. That may seem a lesser matter when measured against such a creature as Grawlon. But do not mistake it. Friendship between elves and dwarves may count for much in the days ahead. But I do not agree with one action. Mazak is an enemy and a foul one. His life should not have been spared. He cannot stay here. You cannot see it from here, Pine Lore, but far to the east. A great cloud lies always over Dol Guldor in southern Mirkwood. An evil stirs there, and it lies in watchfulness. It doesn't have the strength to move against us, and the Sauron himself wages war against Lorien. But its power is growing. We cannot wait for the force of Dol Guldor to come forth in strength. You must continue to be our eyes and ears, Pine Lore. To that end, I give you a gift, a cloak of elf make. Few indeed have been given such garments. May it serve you well on the road ahead wherever it may be. I thank you for the deeds that you have already done, and also for those that you will surely do in the future. How dear will show you out. Right. No, he did all the talking. We do not allow outsiders into the Golden Wood. Are you ready to leave? I share Lord Celeborn's concerns. Let us discuss them as we walk. So what should we do now? When the time comes for us to cross the river and fight, I will call for you. The winds of change are blowing, Pine Lore, and I fear they carry with them an onset of war. Lorian cannot remain isolated in this safety forever. Lord Celeborn's gaze must turn towards Mirkwood and the great shadow that lies over Dol Guldur. When the time comes to cross the river and fight, as it seems we must, I will call for you. Had I once thought that it might not be necessary, I don't any longer. Too many signs seem to point in that direction. Stay well. We will need to we have need of you again. Yes, we guess they would. Now let's see, we have a cloak of the golden wood. Level 60. Hmm. Alright, I guess this is the one that I want. You know, 
I don't think it's an improvement. <laughs> well, I'll look over it again when I reach level 60. So what now? The preparations required by the Golden Host will take some time. Lord Caliborn is making preparations for a great incursion into Mirkwood. Not for conquest, but to forestall the attack from Dodor that must surely come. We are gathering supplies and making all things ready for the passage of the Malavrim, the Golden Host. And the Lord and Lady are carefully selecting those who will lead it. One of those I think is likely to travel with the Golden Host is named Isuriel. And she's a student of history and of the mysteries of the natural world and spoke often with Mithrandir on the rare occasion his business brought him to the Golden Wood. She seeks to know the true nature of things and loves unraveling out puzzles and secrets above all else. Isuriel has been asking for you. She wished to hear the tale of Mazog's capture in the depths of Moria from your lips and has questions to ask of you. Look for her at the high flat atop Kirin Amroth. All right, back to Kirin Amroth. Ah, here's Isurio. Tell me what happened following Marzog's capture. How did you escape the throne room? It is a pleasure to meet you at last, Pine Lore, and I hope that you'll assist the Golden Hose to when the time comes to push forward into Mirkwood. Lord Celeborn has asked me to be involved in planning for the offensive, so in order to fully understand the mind of the captive Mazog, I listen to Coronthiel's account of his capture. With interest, I learned of your infiltration through the secret way into the throne room of Mazog. But Coronthiel seized her tail at the point where the orc leader was captured. I pressed her for more information, but she said the memory was grim, and she did not desire to relive it so soon. Tell me what happened following the capture of Mazog. How were you able to escape from the very heart of Mazog's throne room, and with the King of the Orcs still in tow? Really? I am ready to hear the rest of the story. Right. We can't skip this one? Isuria, listen to the tale of your adventure along the secret road into Rush Durino, where the Orc King Marzog was seized by the dwarves. But there was more to the story, and now she waits for you to tell it. It is too soon to celebrate over much fine lore, I know, but to have come even this far is something extraordinary. And yet, I wonder. Mazog is of great value to the forces of the enemy. Can it be that they will consider a trade? If we were to bring Mazog before the gates of Dol Guldor, would were Gulthu accept Mazog's life and trade for that of my cousin Bori? I have sworn a vow that my axe shall end Mazog's life. But if greater good could be accomplished by his survival, well... It becomes a more difficult question, Pine Lore. We cannot abandon Bori now. If we trade Mazak for my cousin's freedom, we must do so. I mean no disrespect, Broin, but this cannot be! We cannot show Mazak even the slightest mercy! How many dwarves has he slain? How many of our people have died because of him? That's enough, Orvar! How many elves and dwarves alike will suffer if Mazak is permitted to live, I wonder? What do you think, Pine Lord? Oh, now they're putting it on me. I agree we must bear Mazak's life. Mazak is too da- he's too dangerous. How can you say this? Did you not know Bori? You were there when he was captured. You know what he was must be going through. 
Do not think for a moment that I am pleased with this. Mazax is responsible for so many sorrows, as was my bro his brother Bog and his father Azog before him. We must owe Bori this. We must at least try. All right, but this sounds like a mistake. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Pinelore, but we must do it this way. I need Mazak alive. I agree with Pinelore. Do not take this lightly. It is my decision to make, and I have made it. Come here. Take these shackles and use them to bind Marzog's wrist. They are made of iron and should be strong enough to keep him secure as we fight our way from this place. Alright, let's shackle him with iron, I mean. Uh, bind me at your peril, hobbit! You think these bracelets can bind Mazak is on the main? <laughs> you are a fool if you think I cannot sunder these with even the smallest effort. But I will wait until you are most vulnerable, Hobbit, and then you will feel my hand around your neck. Well, if these are my final days and all, then I have to take care of something first. Okay, we can continue. Good, Pine Lord, come here. All right, was that for the binding or for the fish slap? Now we need to make our way from Rush Durnil, but I fear that we have taken too long already. This place will soon be swarming with orcs. If we hope to escape from here with our lives and that of our captives, we need someone to manage the flow of battle. I suggest that you accept this role. You will need to tell us what support role should be as the battle ebbs and flows. Should we focus on improving your morale, your power, your strength of attacks, or the for or the fortitude of your defenses? Shout your commands at this banner and we will modify our support role. Wonderful. Well now, do we need morale support, power support, defensive support, or offensive support? I think I could bring out plenty of offense, so we'll get defense support from them. Here we go. Of course, some say that maybe the best defense would be a good offense. I suppose that's always a possibility also. So let us go and deal with these. Are we ready? And apparently the orcs have decided to send another wave. Uh, let, let's go and bash them, smash them, crash them, quack them. Anything else? Of course there's more. There's always more. Per perhaps I... Perhaps I shouldn't use that attack. <laughs> they come at me with a beeline, yes. Now's our chance! Let's move! Mazak and all this? Or did he already rush on ahead? Ah! I missed it. Oh, there he is. Get ready! Here they come! Oh, let's bash them out quickly. Yeah, plenty of offense, that's for sure. Then I have, yeah, all right, we'll just, I don't know if it remembers what I did before or not. 
Okay, it says defensive support. What does defensive support do? Minus 50% incoming. Okay, so they only do half damage against me. That's the defensive support they give. Patrol. Now, yeah, I can deal with the troll, right? You must continue onward. Where's the other troll? You suspect they only brought one? <laughs> well. This isn't very good if he is so far. And then he stops here conveniently. He just wants to play with us, that's for sure. Right, here we go. And. Ah. Well, I see I do not have the buff anymore, it looks like. Alright, so let's. So let's go and put in the defensive support. Yeah, alright, so I have to reapply it each time. That's the thing that I see in there. So it looks like if I do this right, I'm not taking much damage anyway, so I don't know why I'm worried about getting defensive support. Yes, Nibbling Sneaks, free me! Hey, they somehow got behind me. And for you? You can't hold me! My servants are numberless! More from the rear! Numberless. Now's our chance. Free me, you spineless curse! Oh, uh, well. them up ahead okay. how about if I do offensive support what does that give me now offensive support is Oh, I, it doubles my damage. Okay, maybe I'll just have to sneeze on them then, right? Like, how fast does this troll go down if I have the double damage buff instead? Roll us out there! Once more, once we reach Earth, we should be safe. I don't believe this. Worthless curs! Here we go. We've made it! Is that what you think? <laughs> Rule here! 
You think I want to rule here? <laughs> I have no desire to rule this miserable kingdom. You have no idea what's happening, do you? Gorothal's master is generous to his friends. He looks out for them. He tells them things. Mine will be the greatest of his armies. What reward do you desire? Gorthrold asked me. Only the kingdom that should be mine, I told him. That place will not do, he said. My master has commanded me to draw forth the great terrors of the abyss. This, that kingdom will never be free of them, he said. And only fools would disbelieve his words. So, you mean he plans to draw out every terror of Moria? Oh, excuse me, before we had that battle... I agree. A deadly attack is best. All right. You think you've defeated them? You send them back to the deep shadow, but still they eye the world above. They hunger to return. Gorothog makes certain that they would remember the way. Uh oh. Uh, problem! Yeah. 200% damage from Murder of Crows. <laughs> you didn't stand a chance. That was close. But we have managed to bring Mazog once more under control. I should have known that he would have s some fight left in him. One thing for certain, friend. We will need to make some stronger shackles to hold our prisoner in the future. Well, that is for sure. Quickly now, before more orcs attack, let us take Mazog with us and leave this place behind. And that's how we escaped from the throne room. Your tale teaches a valuable lesson. We must not underestimate Mazog. The tale of your escape from Rushjournio with Mazog, still a captive, was a more harrowing than I had expected, and I thank you for recounting it to me. If we are to work with the dwarves and bring Mazog to Dol Guldor, as Broin intends, we must learn from that lesson. The Orc King must not be underestimated. I trust that Bruin's people are crafting new shackles for Mazog. To begin with the most obvious lessons of this escape? But there is more. The words of Mazog made me wonder. Look first to your own doorstep before taking the fight to that of your enemy. It is, it is, it is, it is said by the wise, is it not? Okay. One thing Mazog said to you troubles me more than any other. Much of Mazog's ramblings in the depths of Rajdurno could have been empty bluster, the boasting and threats of a caged animal. But one thing he said troubles me more than any other, the revelation that the reward that he seeks is the rule of another kingdom. Long have the orcs and dwarves battled in the caverns beneath the misty mountains, and the lineage of Mazog has been the forefront in that conflict. If Mazog, son of Azog, and brother of Bolg, has decided to abandon rule in Moria, it can only be because he feels that Moria will no longer be fit to rule. What great evil must this ally Gorothul have set in motion in the depths that could so devastate that vast kingdom and make it unfit even for the rule of orcs. Return to Gwathrandath in the Foundations of Stone and speak with Linglamo and Forglor there. They have spent a great deal of time in the depths and may know something about what we might be facing. Ah, 
What could we possibly be facing now? Maybe you'll find that out in the next episode of Lore of the Shadows.